Hey guys, wanted to check in with everybody real quick. Um, I'm on vacation, so I thought we'd look way back in the catalog. And as it happens to be, this is our anniversary of the first set of podcasts we released. So I thought maybe I'd share with you guys to remind you of the first episode we did as the full foursome with Jim in tow, even though Jim never does anything. So uh, Sam, AC, Max, and myself in our first official podcast um, as a review for you guys to see how far we've come from then to now. So I'm going to step out of the way and introduce myself, introducing the team. So we appreciate y'all listening and we'll be back with new episodes very soon. Almost in agreement is the official name of the podcast. And now everybody knows that. Well, after this episode, it will be absolutely not in agreement. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I don't think we need a... What if I agree with that? <laughs> <laughs> this will be the one time tonight. But, um, so for reference, it is the 21st of March, 2020. We are amid the coronavirus debacle which will be probably the majority of our discussion tonight since we have one almost doctor and three mostly morons that are going to argue about knowing healthcare issues better than the almost four. doctor. We have four mostly morons. Oh, yeah, cool. Jim's, Jim's around here somewhere. He'll be in in a minute. <laughs> yeah, but that's not a medical doctor. Yeah, it doesn't change the... It changes the ratio a little bit, but it doesn't change the one almost doctor versus... One almost doctor, not medical doctor. I thought Jim was a medical he was a. No, he just went to school for like 32 years. What did he study for 32 years? All sorts of random shit. Philosophy. Ethics. <laughs> All right, so I mean, I guess we'll go right into it. We've been getting uh, we've been getting hot and heavy in the text group about mostly. I guess let me see if I can surmise this correctly. The main issue is regardless of party affiliation or status in the, the system at whole, we need to figure out how to hold our leadership accountable without it being a complete dismissal of the stance. So we can be okay. We can be not okay with a particular item, which does not mean we're not okay with the entire thing. Is that the general, yeah, generally what you're after? I, I think, um, so we're familiar with cancel culture. True. You know, like we're, we're, we're aware of that as a thing. Right. The, my goal is to get this podcast big enough to get canceled. So, no, why don't you elaborate on, on cancel, cancel culture? culture? Okay, so um, big thing in the, well, not a big thing, but uh, like a relatively big thing in music over the last week or so is the Dixie Chicks came out with this album. It's a, like a new album they've had, the first album they've had in maybe like 15 years or something. Right. The last time anybody heard anything about Dixie Chicks, it was the... Uh, yeah, they shit on Bush or something. Well, so and part of what... So the words that you just used to describe it really wasn't actually accurate. Like, they didn't really shit on him. They just disagreed with some of the policies that dipshit was doing at the time. And the concern is that at that time, right? <laughs> exactly. I caught it. Right. So the, the, the concern, though, is is at that time, you know, it's most of the people that listen to their music are, uh, you know, at least 51% of the people that listen to the Dixie Chicks music are, are conservative. I would think it would be a, a decent I would say that's an underestimate, yeah. Right. Well, I'll say at least. I'm agreeing with you. Calm down. Are you? I think I think a, a better example of, um, not, I mean, the Dixie Chicks is more mainstream, but Lauren mm -hmm. Daigle. You guys know who Lauren Daigle is? Uh -uh. No. Um, well, I went to her concert. I do remember hearing about that, but um, I don't know much about her. So Lauren Daigle, um, huge Christian music artist. Like, huge. And uh, she was asked um, about her stance on gay marriage. Or gay people. 
and she kind of gave a response of, you know, people are individuals and, you know, I might be qu not quoting it correctly, but basically like people should make their own decisions on what they want to do, basically. And the Christian community came out and was like, oh my God, we need to stop buying Lauren Daigle concerts. If she's going to say that, you know, homosexuality is okay. <coughs> and so she went from, it, it, I think it kind of helped her because now then she was played on, and if you guys don't know Lauren Daigle, but if I played a song for you, you guys would think it was Adele. Um, there's just a lot of songs. Is that the one that um, uh, Jennifer was listening to? Like a big, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, it does. Yes, it does yes. sound like Adele, sounded, I went first time. I was like, oh, that sounds like there's not Adele. Doesn't yeah. Adele sing that? Anyway, so she got like ostracized by the Christian community because of one simple thing, and they loved her for everything else and. She has a lot of outreach programs and stuff like that, but they, because of that one thing, and that's kind of, when you talk about cancel culture, that's kind of the thing. Right. It's like it takes one thing to make you not like that person. Anymore. And then it goes, I mean, that goes into our last episode conversation in the politics of sports thing. It's like Kaepernick's political opinions, If I, as a sports fan, I don't care about his political opinions. I'm supposed to care about his ability to play the game and put on a good show as far as whatever the game is that he's playing. If he wants to spout his political opinions, that shouldn't change as long as that's not affecting his ability to play the game, which in his case, I guess it did. Or, I mean, the best example is like, or maybe not the best example, but another good example would be Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson and all the pedophilia and all the issues that he's had, does it take away from the quality of his music because of his personal life? Right, so um, I think that idea of cancel culture, like we're referring to, the Kaepernick's right. the Dixie right, Chicks, right, right. the Adele sound alike, um, it really seems like that, sort of the, the, the spirit of that is what happens when we get to a point where we, we feel like we can't even remotely criticize the people that we uh, sort of like or uh, trust in politics or whatever. And it's almost right. like we have to protect them so much that it's almost like we're concerned that cancel, cancel culture will happen to the individual that we question, that we like. Right. And as a consequence, we have to have blinders on and spin things that don't have to be spun. I mean, if they're in an right. elected office, we should put heat. I think I said this in the group text. We should put heat on these motherfuckers all the time. I I don't disagree with that. I think what got I think what got deeper in the text conversation to me was that I guess in my opinion, at least the 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 the, the structure that should be the first to put the heat on should be the media, and that's where we got into a whole bunch of side arguments about media issues and stuff like that because we can't. We are, we can't, as much as we should be able to, especially on the federal level, it's hard for us to have any real impact. Individuals as voices. That's the problem with the size of the system is that the four of us sit at this table outside of the five. Sorry. Well, he's not at the table right now. Anyway, outside of the dozens of listeners we hope to have, don't have the ability, even if we took all of our listenership and us and Co and coalesced over an issue and pitched a fit about it, it's 20 of how many 330-something million Americans? And to a president, what is one-tenth of one-tenth of one percent as far as somebody that needs to be listened to? Well, I mean, it just goes back to the, <clears throat> like, you, know, you, you have one thing wrong with something, um, and then all of a sudden you don't like that person for everything and and you know like uh whoopi goldberg love sister act can't stand her on the view but i still can enjoy the movie mm -hmm. right amy schumer sure. i don't like her <laughs> political views but she's fucking hilarious <laughs> right so you know and i can enjoy and i'm not like oh i'm not gonna go watch an amy schumer movie because i don't i disagree with her politically i mean she is a famous person and she's using you know her her um, success in her, whatever you call it, um, platform. Her platform to get her points across. And hell, I mean, if we get big, I'll probably do the same. I mean, we're up to five listeners now, so. Um, Which is everybody that's currently here. Right yes, <laughs> everyone here. <laughs> hey, we got to start somewhere. <laughs> um, so the question, I guess, then is: is why, why do we? Uh, why are we not able to criticize the people that we uh, want to have in power? or we think are good in power, you know? Right. So, so for the folks that follow Trump, why do we find that it is easy for individuals to 
take up for that individual if facts, I'm not talking about like political commentary because there's obviously a difference between political commentary and facts. If we can figure out what the facts are, why does it seem like we are unable to criticize that individual? Same thing with Obama or anybody else before. Right. So if somebody was a pro-Obama person, and the right. guy did something that was fucking dumb that right. we should like be able drone, to like drone like his yeah like drone I mean that, that's you know I'm against that and I, but you know I voted for him I mean right. I, I'm perfectly capable of of saying I lean politically left but if those motherfuckers are out of line like right they need to be told they need to be caught on that but then but, but, like, but, but it goes also the other direction if if you think that person is so negative you can't see any positive in that person. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Sure, I, I mean, it, and I think I think we're both I think we're both the same side of the same coin. Um, that you you always point out. I mean, it's the team game. It's 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 the what tribal you don't like team about that person. I'm it. trying to tell you what I do like about that person, and we just keep on going back and forth on that subject. I mean, I'm happy to if there are some things that Trump has done that have been positive. Like I'm happy to admit what they. I mean, I'm saying well, yeah, that's I, true. I mean, that's what I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm asking you. I mean, you, oh, yeah. You, yeah, I mean, what, what, the things that he's done in particular that are positive, if they are positive, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's Unemployment awesome. Unemployment rate? Well, I mean, nope. sure, but prior then, to, but sure. Prior I mean, to what? Prior to Prior currently. to coronavirus. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Currently. It doesn't I matter mean, who's elected right I, now. This is right. a, I, an I issue. Would, <laughs> I would say this much. I, it, it is, it's great that the unemployment level was low prior to the coronavirus. I think even if it was low with Obama, I think I think I would say uh, I'm not sure how much influence Obama would have in that. Now, if there are actual direct policies that that he has, Iran. What about? I, I didn't have an issue with the Iran. We took deal. the we took the sanctions off Iran, which should have happened. You know, but we had sanctions. Wait, we uh, had the sanctions. Obama. No, 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 no. O- Obama removed the sanctions on Iran. No, we had we had a we had a pact with them. Like we yes, had, exactly. We got right. rid of that pact. I mean, I, I didn't have an issue with that being in place, frankly. Like, I really didn't. I, I mean, I, I didn't. I didn't have an issue with it. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, we can talk about something else if you'd like, but I didn't have an issue with that. <laughs> okay. We don't, we don't need to get on that topic. Okay. Right now. We need to, that's fine. That's, a, that's another, uh, that goes into the military uh, topic. Okay. Oh, we can talk about it if you want to. I don't care. I'm just saying that if there are things that Trump has done that are positive, I am, I am happy to say, yeah, that's great. So, so then, what are the negatives? Other uh, don't and don't pull out like his just stupid talking on Twitter and all that kind of <laughs> stuff, because I, that has no effect on how the country's running. Because he's like, you're a dumbass. I think it's fake news, all that stuff that that has that no is, policy effect. Whatsoever. I don't agree with I don't agree with that. I'm happy to not talk about that, but I, I don't agree with that. It doesn't have any effect. I think that that allows us to dig in deeper with our particular side i think it creates an even greater partisan divide uh no i do agree with that so so, it, so well, well it, it, and the reason why it creates a bigger partisan side is because i can sit here well maybe not on air but you're sitting around your friends you can say stuff and you think it's hilarious and you can laugh your ass off but when somebody in public that you don't mm. like says that then you're like ah. Oh, well, I can't right. believe you said that. You would deep on this one, as far as as far as who should have said and and things that should have been said and and how how he presents himself, which I'll ad, I'll admit that it's not it's not a great positive, but it's not. I don't see it as I I get what you're saying as far as it helps it helps deepen the divide, but I don't know that it's deepen the divide as much as it's just made it clear that it was there. I don't know that it was any, I, I don't know that, it, I mean, you know, if we're going to go Obama presidency and uh, McConnell and the Senate at that time was just McConnell was like, I, we're going to do everything we can to not let him do anything, period. doesn't matter if we agree with it or not. Just because he's doing it, we're not doing it. It was the same thing during Obama's administration. It just wasn't as blatant as it, as it is now with the way Trump says it. So I don't, I don't. I'm going to take up for Trump on this one. I, I, I don't, I don't, I think it was. Just as blatant then, I think Mitch McConnell was. I mean, he, you know, he said he wasn't gonna, gonna have any votes whatsoever on any Supreme right. Court and, and Pelosi. So, so, like, I'm taking up for Trump on this one. I don't think he's actually made, uh, made it more visible. I think he's just deepened it. I think it was clear that partisanship was going on prior right. to Trump coming in the office. Like, I'm not gonna blame that on him. No, that's, that's what I'm what, saying though. Is I think he's he's um what's the, what's the word I'm trying to think of here? It's uh, 
um, a Ben Shapiro's one of Ben Shapiro's things he likes to say is that he wasn't he didn't murder the system. He's the coroner. It was already dead when he got there. He's the one that's he he's the one that's 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 pulling the sheet up on the dead body. And he's willing to use the the terminology, for lack of a better word, to make it clear how dead this body already is. Wow. And whether he's doing that intentionally or is a whole separate conversation, but the system has already been so deeply rutted that I don't know that I'd, I'd I don't know that I would give him credit for making it more. Maybe it's maybe it's easier for the media. Maybe it's easier for people in general to take their side and really dig their heels in, especially in a more or in a in a in a less engaging conversation sort of way, more more visceral, more angry because of Trump. But I don't think the sides were less there. They're just they just weren't as angry and blatant as they are now. I mean, they're they sorry I said that backwards, but you get what I'm saying. It's yeah. like the sides were already there. It's just it was less angry and blatant before. It is just more clear and more angry. Um, and I will I, I would give Trump some credit for that as far as his rhetoric allowing mm-hmm. people to feel like they can get away with some of the shit they do. Right. It's, it's, well, it's I, definitely an amplified. And also with just the way technology has gone, I mean, senators have their own Twitter and Instagram, blah, 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 yeah. to where they're able to you know, <coughs> get responses and have responses and have things retweeted and politicians are able to see different news stories and they're able to retweet those. Right. And they're able, they're, they're, their staff's able to sit down on the on the algorithm and see what's trending better for them and react appropriately. Well, you know what I was w- earlier on our uh, show or the, you guys don't know. Us four have a uh, text message. Five. Five. Damn it. Five. We forget <laughs> about him all the time. Um, we're um, about. He's quieter than Steve is, so. He doesn't talk to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, the, we have a text message that goes back and forth and all that kind of stuff. And uh, um, Bill is very, very <laughs> fast uh, tweeter or texter. And you cannot keep up with him. So, he text like 30 different items before you can reply to his first conversation um but anyway no hold on time out real quick that is a perfect example of why social media is problematic as a whole i don't know if that's where you're going with this no no where i'm going with that is, is when we were talking about earlier when i said um you know trump is breaking the system and you say no he's dividing the system more and more and it you know, before I could text back, um, there was three or four other texts about other topics. And by the time I was replying back, it had nothing to do with <laughs> the, the last three texts that came through. Right. That's, that's so, my point. Yeah. Um, it, it was hard. What is your point? So the, the point that I was trying to make is, you know, I think what divided it, it was nobody thought that Trump was going to get elected. The Democrats were, having their first female president, they were... And it was done. It was done. (laughs) It was over. And they were already, you know, celebrating in the end zone, kind of like the Alabama-Auburn game when Auburn ran back the kick, the the field goal goal for a touchdown. It destroyed them. And from that, I think that they, the anti-Trump, really got into effect. And so... Because of that, there is a lot more animosity to Trump than if it would have been a Trump favorite or that kind of stuff. And why I say he's breaking the system is because we are getting to a place where I think a majority of people are starting to realize. I don't think everybody is far left and far right. And I think that there is an opportunity for us to get something else going. And so... Because you divide it so much, it breaks it. And people are going to realize that we can't do this. We can't be so far right and we can't be so far left to make this happen. Right. Um, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, if you want to get into the, the current sphere, you had a handful of the early Democratic candidates in the primaries that were much more centered and probably could have run away with it in a general right off the bat. But since they had to run as a Democrat and the the party is in such a weird spot that they feel like they have to go further left 
to get their base in line to and i think that's that, that's that's what's going to be the the long term hopefully you're right hopefully it, it's like oh third party hopefully on my end but um you know somebody if one of the two parties doesn't come back to center quickly it's going it, to it's going to force a third party you know i honestly think that um Trump was going to run as a Democrat. He was a Democrat all his life. Yeah, and he's like he was it. actually a registered Democrat all his life. Yeah. And he was going to run as a Democrat, and the Democrat Party turned his back because they wanted Hillary, and said he said, "Well, shit, I'll just run as a Republican." There's a I mean, I mean, Bloomberg. This, I mean, there, and a, I wonder about all these all these Democrats that hate Trump. If he was, if he ran, ran as and a beat, Democrat, right, and beat Jeb Bush, and beat Jeb Bush, <laughs> yeah. If it would be the same, if we'd be in the same spot. Would 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 all, all right. these Democrats saying, "Oh yeah, Trump's our man." All right, so let's illustrate it as as a simple question: if if Trump ran as a Democrat, ran through the party that way, and beat Jed Bush, would he be any different as a president now? No. Uh, what was the question? I'm sorry. If Trump had ran as a Democrat and beat Hillary and beat Bernie, um, and then beat Jed Bush or whoever the Republicans put up on the other side. Mm-hmm. Would John we be? Would, would anything be any different right now? Yeah. I think. I think. I think yes. Honestly, sure. But. I. I. One hundred percent. I mean, he. There's. There's no way that his. There's no way the Democrats would be okay with, uh, you know, chanting "Build a Wall." I mean, like his entire structure would have to be forced whoa, whoa, different. Whoa! 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 Okay. We're gonna. We're Can gonna... I finish the thought? Okay. Go. Okay. <laughs> uh, there. He. He wouldn't be chanting. Uh, lock her up. He wouldn't. He wouldn't have. Oh, made... he would have. He would have won in the primary. No. Who's he locking up? Yeah. Hillary, because he would been running her against her in the primary in, in this no, no, no. situation. I, I, no, no, no. I, I'm talking about the general election. So you said Jeb Bush, right? Right. He's running against Jeb Bush. Right. I'm, t- I'm talking about. I'm talking John about John McCain, election. most likely. <laughs> well, he, hopefully he's a corpse by then. But actually, he died afterwards. So, yeah. yeah. Asshole. Who, me or McCain? Either. Anyway. Willie mean, Nelson died, did they? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Yeah. He Kenny did. Rogers died. Kenny Did Rogers, you? Kenny Rogers, sorry, big sorry. fucking difference, yeah, bro. Right. Just, they're both damn, country singers. They both have gray hair. Old gray hair guys. Come on, man. one's got a better beard. Though. One has a lot more THC in his system. <laughs> yes, one does, <laughs> and he's still living. Okay. So, uh, what did we learn today? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Did we learn that today? I don't know. Or at right, least for the Kenny Rogers. Where, where were we? We were, we were talking about cancel culture. How the hell did we go down this? This is, uh, let's, let's back up a little bit. We were, going it, the it, we were talking right. about uh, Trump Democrat. being a Democrat. Right. Running against Marco Rubio or Jed Bush or whoever. John McCain. Right. Well, yeah. He wouldn't be sure. chanting he build be, a wall. Right. He wouldn't be chanting build a wall. He would not He would not be saying get rid of gays in the military uh, or the don't ask, don't tell policy. He would, that, that wouldn't be touched at all. Right. Uh, he wouldn't be talking about tax cuts to companies exclusively. That's not something he would do. The interesting thing is, in the primary, he uh, Trump, the primary guy, talked about Medicare for all, and then all of a sudden he gets in office and he's you know wanting to remove Obamacare. I'm not saying Obamacare is positive or negative; it's a different subject altogether. I'm just saying that it's, negative. It, it, it's not the point. It's not the point. The point is, um, he never would have went back on Obamacare if he had been. You know, every... I don't say I don't know. That's the point. Is that? It, but like you said, he in in primaries and in the general. He had a number of issues on the Republican side of the ticket that he, that were clearly kind of selling to the base kind of issues, build the wall, lock her up, whatever, um, that, you know, he's pushed for, but he hasn't gotten done. And he had two years of Republican control. His first two right. years, he could have got almost anything done if he really, like, I, that's what floors well, and, me. But, uh, but I think the, the I think, I think the Republicans uh, 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 were initially like, well, is this really happening? Is this? What, yeah, what but do we come do on, right the now? shock of two years. I mean, come on. If you want to get anything done, I mean, the only time you're going to get this done is in two years. Right. No, no. So. You, okay, so your build the wall thing. You know, every president that has gotten elected since Reagan has talked about we need immigration to immigration issues. Yeah. Sure, I, I'm not so trying to... So because he says build a wall, that's no different than what Obama said. That's not no different than what... Right, he's the just Clintons, a better... The Bushes. I think it's a little... I mean, I, I mean to, say that, to say that Trump... Trump's support for build the wall is is the same as Obama's. Is, is a uh, no, stretch? No, it's not a stretch. They all talked about we need to secure our borders. We need to have better border control. Just because his stupid saying "build a wall" 
They were right. all talking about the same he's a better thing. Sa- he's a better salesman. Is really what, I mean, he's a better yeah, clearly salesman. Clearly he's, he's not. He hasn't marketing. built it. Like, he's not a builder, better it's, salesman. It's, he's, it's, he hasn't it's, built a sh- he hasn't but, built anything. But he, he sold it. Built. He sold the idea whether he's he, whether like he, he hasn't. it or not. It's not built. 160 miles or something of wall has been built. How long does it take? I mean, I we would, can't I, get the Hispanics to build it or it been built already. I mean, that was the other thing, too. I thought it was hilarious. Like, it oh, was. my God, let's get them. Gonna, gonna they're going to pay them. for it. Like, no, they're not. No. Like, well, like they're, they're never going to pay for it. They I mean, will it, if you make them American citizens and then hire them to build the wall. <laughs> that shit would have been done already. They should have had like, a, hey, you know, we're going to let you have citizenship. We just need you to build that wall. <laughs> that fucker would have been built in a week. I've already heard of a section that got blown over by a storm. I think it was a large storm. It was somewhere around <laughs> California. I saw the pictures on that, actually. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so was, to clarify... Was somebody behind it. To but clarify a there point. There was also where they wanted to be able to see through the wall, so they had, I believe it was concrete or... Why would anybody need to see through a wall? It's called I, a, I'm just, it's called I'm a window. Kidding. Yeah, well, we're, gonna show, <laughs> we're, gonna build, we're gonna build windows on the border. <laughs> right, right, right. Who the fuck needs that? Like, I mean, like, can you put a fucking camera sixteen it. feet up? What the fuck do you need to see through that? We got, we got, we got, we got windows. Please do not throw any rocks. I know. Like, you're gonna wave at the people that are illegal. <laughs> Hi, you can't come over here. What the fuck is that about? Maybe like, it's a screen door. You can like pass water through. But it was basically you know concrete you don't give pillars, <laughs> but they were they were able to be cut through with just a circular saw. All right, so let me clarify a point here. Battery powered circular saw, because uh, or you bring a generator and then you let all the Americans know that you're there. Well, no, you, you there's know, power like a, running underneath the line, and but Trump already so the, let let go some of the secrets that were that were a part of the whole wall. So so the so the mojitos that are trying to jump the wall then are going to tap into a mojitos. underground. It's it, it's just go with it. Right. Are, are going to tap into an underground uh, electrical wire in order to use a circular saw to get through. I, I figured at least this is the right. mojitos Italian, I think. Oh, he does not. Italian. It's a rum drink. It's not a it's fucking not a, tequila it's drink. It's definitely not. He said, oh, it's in the margarita. <laughs> Origin. Spanish. Clarify a point. Yes. A salesman doesn't do the job. A salesman sells the job. What is a what is an what is he has not sold the job? What is a what is well, a po- he got elected? I think he right. sold it. <laughs> what is a politician selling? A politician is selling themselves to take the job, not to do the job. That's not how it should be. That's not the point. We're gonna. Do, Havana, Cuba is the birthplace of the mojito. Do we need exactly? To, it's Cuban drink. So, so do we need to go? Do we need to go down the rabbit hole of of lied so, of of failed ca- campaign promises? Is that? I mean, I mean, no. Every but, president, every election does that. Every time I, there's promise sure, after promise Jesus, after promise after so, promise. So, so he just how is build idea. the wall? How is build the wall any different than any other campaign promise? Well, this goes this goes back to no, my criticism. New taxes. Right? Th- th- this is sure. This goes back to my criticism thing, though. Like, so if you are so pro build the fucking wall and the guy hasn't built it, why can't we criticize him for that? I don't how see about, how about why every Republican and every Dem, or well, not really Democrat because it doesn't matter, but every Republican is like, oh, we're going to have abortion reform. We're going to cancel abortion. They get elected and nothing changes. Well, because Roe Wade already exists. There's nothing to change. Well, he, well, yeah, you can change just like. What are you going to change? Well, people were slaves at one time, weren't they? I'm not sure what that has to do with Roe Wade, though. Well, um, we're talking about. Amen- I mean, it'd have to be a specific amendment of some sort. I mean, it would have to be very, a very specifically built you, wall. You, you, to, you to just do said it. that because of Roe versus Wade, abortion could never be changed in the United States. That's I'm not saying, what you're saying no. I'm not saying never. You you, you said it's harder. It's, ha- it's more complicated, but yeah, right. I, like you have to get a Supreme Court justice, a conservative justice, to die again, or be assassinated. Or main something. point, like main point. It's a little bit more difficult than like they just didn't get it done. They didn't get it done because it's. I mean, it's it's well, really what I'm tough saying to is, do. I'm that, saying why is, hasn't the wall been built? Because I mean, well, what I'm saying, he had is, two years of Republican <laughs> control. Like, come on! Like, you so gotta then, criticize, criticize. So that. then, why I'm not saying that? we don't criticize it. That's not my point. I'm not. I the, the, another uh, another side question to it is is are we criticizing because it's not done, or are we criticizing because he said he would do it and it's not done? Because yes. those are two separate things. I mean, I, I I think in this circumstance, if you if a person is pro Trump, and if the idea of having a wall is something that was appealing to them. I don't care about the value judgment of all of whether or not it should or should not have been built. I'm saying if a person is pro-Trump and they like the idea of having a right. border, they should be dogging him relentlessly. They should be saying, "Where's saying, my fucking this wall?" You promised fucking me. absurd. Like, get the fucking wall. Built. But that's every campaign promise. I, you I know, don't uh, care uh, about that. That's not my point. I'm just saying that there should be more folks putting heat on him for this particular. Thing. I agree. That's I, all I'm saying. I agree. But, but, but I disagree because I'm. I wouldn't say I'm pro-Trump, but I'm not. I'm not anti-Trump forever. Like. Bill is, but um, the uh, I don't agree. You want to build a wall? Fucking let those people in. 
I think that would be better. I think that let them all fucking. I say open up the fucking border and let all those Mexicans in because these Americans they're gonna have to fucking work. They're gonna have to starve. <laughs> I That's 100% it. don't disagree with you. I completely agree with you on that. I really do. I mean, I'm serious. Like, I go down to Mexico. Like, I was in Mexico last year, and there was a guy I met down there, and if I could get him here right fucking now and run my food truck, <laughs> fuck, I'd be a millionaire. There's a little <laughs> fucking Mexican restaurant over there in Halls. It's a, swear to God, it's 10 feet by 10 foot little drive through thing. It's got the best authentic Mexican food ever. If we built those walls, I wouldn't be eating those fucking burritos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're hard workers. Not second generation Hispanics, but first generation are. So it's not a question then. And maybe we're going down a rabbit hole, another rabbit hole, which is not surprising. Yeah, we can't go down this rabbit hole because uh, Bill's agreeing. No, with no. Me. Well, I think we agree on more than we think. I just think that I'm a little more vocal with the stuff that Trump does or does not do. You just, you just be like, Trump's a fucking idiot. Right. Trump's a fucking he idiot. He is a fucking idiot. And then I'm like, uh, well, you want to have a pedophile? Why we gotta insult people? That's not, I'm sorry. That, so, that's a lot. so <laughs> and I was like, listen, what the right, right, fuck? right? I'm sorry. So a lot of the stuff that we we have a group text about, like I, a lot of this stuff is it requires a longer conversation. So so I, I wasn't is. saying right. I, I wasn't saying that, you, that that shouldn't be said. I'm just saying that in these circumstances, <clears throat> if you call like when I say Trump is an idiot in the general public, and it, and I don't I don't follow that up with reasons for why I believe that, then I'm an asshole. Like, I, and I really mean that. Like, I, if, 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 I, if I think that Trump is an idiot, I should provide very calm, rational uh, premises for why it is that I feel like he's an asshole. And if I can't do that, then I'm an idiot. And, and sometimes I just want to be like Sam and just give Bill shit just for no reason. That's fair. But, but no, like, I, 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 after I said that, I was like, man, that's not at all. What, like, yeah. I, wasn't trying to be, I wasn't trying to be a dick there. That's not at all what I was trying to say. I was just saying that when, even when I do that sort of thing by making those – Sort of some statements that when I label folks like that, I need to, you know, like be careful because it does increase the rhetoric. Is all I was trying to say, really. Okay, so the clarification anyway, of the of sorry. the first half hour so far is we can't figure out why we can't criticize without criticize a specific issue without taking on a the issue. entire the the entirety of whatever it is. So Trump being the example of the the example du jour is we can't say he did something stupid on this particular issue. Because if we say that, then what people hear is he's an idiot, period. Take out the specifics. Sure. Well, obviously, obviously, I know Ted doesn't think that Trump's a complete idiot. The guy's made millions of dollars, has casinos, sure. fucking... He a got, he, he's elected. He was elected. He was elected. Like, you, you're, you're not a complete sure. fucking idiot, but... Sure. Um, I mean, it's just like, you know, we were talking earlier about, like, Bernie Sanders... There's a lot of things about Bernie Sanders that I think, man, that guy, like Mother Teresa, like the things he wants to do, that would be wonderful. And then then I have to come back to, like, there's no way this fucking thing can get done. There's no way we can do all these things that he wants to do and have a country that's, that well, not a country, but me personally, society that, functions. that I'm affected on a huge basis to do those kind of things and that might be sound like an asshole from my point of view but i want to take care of my family and my friends sure, not sure. not not people i don't know and sure you know that's that might be it's bad, reasonable but uh, it's reasonable I, I will say that none of that stuff has ever been attempted before and i think that's why that's part of the reason why it can be <clears> so <throat> scary for folks like legitimately scary not oh my god he's a he's a fucking communist like i mean yeah, which is a good. different topic <laughs> i guess is that you know we are already we already have large sections of we do and communism uh, already embedded in our economic system as it is so you know but but i understand why it's scary because when you get up there and start talking about this sort of stuff it's like, the well, fuck, i've worked it, hard these motherfuckers no, the other side of it too money. not even that is that okay um of the things that would be technically defined as a socialist that we do already right yeah there's social on services a, on a on a scale of, on a, <laughs> social security but on a scale on a scale of like one to ten how effective are they at doing their jobs so we can, that's I mean, a different topic, though, because then we, I mean, like, we truly do need to get an operating definition of what is efficiency. You know what I mean? Like, and I hate to do that, but that's, I mean, right. otherwise we're just arguing about semantics at that point. Right. You're right. And I mean, we get, I mean, you can go through every single department and find waste and redundancy. Well, it's just like military spending. Sure. People are like, oh, we shouldn't be spending all this money in the military. We should and, as a percentage. And me being 
military. <coughs> I'm like, no, we do need to have spending on military, but the uh, military spending needs to be reformed. So by me, but when someone comes to me, it's like, oh, we don't need to spend all this money on the military. You know, my knee jerk reaction is like, fuck you, you're anti-American. We need to take care of our troops. I didn't realize until I think it was maybe four or five months ago they had a big story on all of the housing, all the military housing on American bases are circa Cold War at at the earliest and just mold rampant. No, 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 no. I mean, not even. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 to this very fucking day. No, 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 because I lived in those fucking barracks. And when I, if you watch in, when I got out, I got 96. Seven, so we had to turn back. Ninety-five. I was living in the same barracks. If you watched the show with Clint Eastwood, um, Heartbreak Ridge, which was nineteen seventy something, nineteen seventy-nine. I think that's when it's filmed. I live in those same fucking barracks, the exact same. That's what he's saying. He's saying that I, most of the barracks are older than shit. Not. I agree. I'm talking about. I got out, and that was nineteen ninety-five. I went back two years ago for um, a friend of mine, Sergeant Major Castle's retirement, and we went back to our old base. There are brand new high rises. There's brand new apartments. There's brand new. They they're redoing everything. Uh, there it used to be like that, but now it's not like okay. that. They're they're redoing. So you can confidently everything. say that every single. I'm not saying that it, every single okay. one is has been redone. I'm not but I'm like, not saying every single one is like that. But I also live in I'm a house saying, but there are. But I also live in a house that was built in nineteen seventy eight that's pretty right. damn nice. Right. So um just because it's it was built in the Cold War area doesn't mean that it was not revamped. Well, okay, though, so that gets into our secondary conversation that we've been texting back and forth about is is the media issue. Is if we had the camera skills and the storytelling skills, we could go out right now and do a documentary about shitty housing on on military bases and we could do it and we could do it and it, it public would, housing whatever yeah whatever we could do it and it would look that way and we could we could make it that way or we could do it the other way where we could find the 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 new ones that are out there and be like oh these are all the public housings in this area what's your point well we, we we're talking facts right but the the point is if 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 the documentary hits right if you put it if you get the platform whether Netflix picks up your documentary or whatever because Netflix opinion now matters to put it out there to the masses, it affects public opinion on on a situation. So, <laughs> has personal specific experience about a particular base, mm -hmm. and it's only one base, and I'm a gajillion of them. I'm not doing the fake name thing. I, I don't know if you guys picked up that. I, I did. I, I thought we all agreed that we weren't gonna. My name's Seth. Okay. All right. Well, Sam. It still is. I'm Bill. Okay. I'm not doing the fake name thing. So whatever. Um. And so, a given point is. A fact, okay. And assuming the story that that Sean. found <laughs> was using facts, they're both facts. Okay. And so the 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 the, the, prolifer the proliferation, the 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 availability of the facts, change by your ability to get the facts, the facts as an don't individual. Change. You're gonna have to rephrase that. No, the facts. I didn't say the facts change. Yeah, the, you just, the, that was the phrase you said. The facts change. The facts you just change. The, 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 the facts represented change. Maybe because say, say that again. The Sorry. facts represented. Represented. Just in case we haven't mentioned it, this is an alcohol induced, in, induced podcast. Rep representative. Um, because <laughs> I can, he can, he can show a fact that these barracks are not being fixed since the Cold War, right? And I can show you a fact that. They are right, so he can show a fact, and I can show a fact. Right, and they're both it still facts. Mean they're both still facts. Right, but they're not changed. We're both right and wrong simultaneously. No, no, but, no. but the larger thing is that is that we could improve certain parts of our housing in the military. That's a larger fact than both the individual facts. Would we not yes, agree to that? But, right, no, but, but what he was saying is you can represent one side. He can go and say, "Look at this person that's living in this bad housing." And I can say, well, look at all these housings that they're doing. So if he just shows that one side, it looks like every single house sure. in the military. Right. And then the next level of it is, is okay, so they both do the documentaries on their particular set of facts. Well, the documentary gets picked up by PBS. Max. You say Cinemax? 
Max, um, Max the Marine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said Cinemax. I'm like, Jesus Christ, is it like, is okay, it porno but, now? Is that what, is that what I, we're I, 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 I don't know. I'm just trying to throw an example. So, so one person gets picked up by Company A to run their documentary. The other person gets up, picked up by Company B to run their documentary. Okay. Company, company B happens to have 20 times the viewership of Company A. And so for the individual sitting at home who is viewing this as, as informational entertainment, they... They are. They have a skewed opinion of what the facts are, by the documentary they happen to see, because of the availability to them. Okay, I, got, I have a great example for you guys on that. Okay, uh, Extreme Home Makeover. You guys watch that show? Thank um, God, no. Not in years. Do you guys? Do you guys know? Are you familiar with that? I show? I know that it exists. And so they they look Bus, for unfortunately like you know people that are in a bad situation and mm-hmm. they're like oh. This is horrible. Let's uh, redo your house. And they have celebrities, and they have people, and they do this whole thing. And all these contractors come out, and like a couple weeks, they build them a whole new house, and they do all this kind of stuff. And you know, it's a it's a huge TV show, and they they stand out there like move that bus. And these people are like, oh my god, I can't believe you built this house. If you look at the statistics about how many people are still in those houses, it's tiny. Because why? what? Huh, because why? He's gonna finish if you let him, oh, if you let Max finish. Yes. Yeah. Why is because these people were living in a eighty thousand maybe uh, dollar house, and they go in and they build them a five, six, seven hundred thousand dollar house that's got all these things. What happens? Property tax goes up. Now these people can't afford the property tax. They end up having to sell the house. They have to get foreclosed on because they can't pay their property tax. Um, some of the people sell their houses. I mean, if you look at the percentage of people that are still in that house today, it's tiny. Like my wife, she's, she <laughs> was like loving that. And I said, do the research. You can go online. And it's like, oh, my God, they're not doing anything for these people. But people think that like, oh, my God, this show is great. Look how what they're doing for these people. They're not doing anything for these people. They're actually causing more harm than good. They're giving them a wonderful lifestyle for a short period of time before they have to come back to reality. And that's not helping people long term. And that's a great example of like what you're saying is they show this, look, wow, look at this. All these actors and famous people are coming out and doing all these wonderful things for these people. But at the end of the day, they're not helping out these people. It's all for ratings. Right. And so you can show any side. I mean, just like we can go back and forth and show why I like Trump, why you don't like Trump, why you like Hillary. Why the fuck are you looking at me? <laughs> I think it's interesting. That, 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 I, I think it's interesting that that uh, just side note because I don't. God damn it, I don't want to fucking talk about her. But uh, I think it's interesting that the Hillary conversation still comes up in conservative circles. Not not like not from Max. I mean, like you flip I'm not, on. I'm not talking about Hillary. She's 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 a great person. Uh, she's wonderful. <laughs> anyway, I, anyway, I don't want to die. I don't want anything. Anyway, 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 anyway moving, on, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. What's the point about the multiple facts at the same time thing? The whole point of the multiple facts that Seth was trying to say is you can portray something any way you want to in the media. No matter right or wrong, you can show a side and only show the side (laughs) that you want to show in the media to portray whatever facts you want. You know, you can, and that, that, isn't that the point you're trying to make is, is it's not about what's true. It's about the point of view that you're telling people. Well, it's it, my, I guess my. It's a problem with Google. Well, the, 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 the issue is that <coughs> we're trying to, you know, our base conversation is about being able to criticize the specific without taking out the whole. And what we get in, in information is based on what we're talking about is, you know, we, we, we watch the documentaries, we watch the news, we watch the whatever, and we have to, as individuals, filter these things out. And, you know, whether, I don't know, in, 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 a, in, a, in a bout of elitism, <coughs> I feel like I can, I can see through some of the bullshit, but what about people that can't? What about people that see story and think that every fucking base is a piece of shit 
I don't think Steve was advocating that every single. I mean, it, no, but I'm just saying. But okay. but right. it, the, right. the 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 inference of the the story is that most of them and all these troops that that we care about and we want to take care of are living in these shitholes because that's what the military provides for them or whatever, and that's the story they get. And so moms and dads at home, which I'm cool with the idea of mom and dad being like, don't go in there because you live in a shithole. I'm great with anybody trying to talk anybody out of going to the military. We'll save it for later, but. Um, I talk, uh, I'm, I'm happy with anybody for any reason trying to talk their kids. Keep out of going, the Seth. You're gonna pause, and this is gonna go down a different hole. Yeah, it already did, but it hasn't. Um, you're in so how favor do we... of talking anybody out of their kids going Seth, in the military? Keep, keep talking. You keep are keep in talking. favor <laughs> of anybody. Like I like. So my point is, my, supportive I'm, or in favor? And, um, my my. You think that every parent should talk their kids out of going in the military? Don't take the <laughs> it's hard right now. Is that what you said? Keep talking. My my point is that that there that people out there can't they 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 have they they have their sources of information, and they don't have the ability to suss out whether this is a very biased version of the information or whether this is full reality. It's not that it's not facts that they're putting out, but these facts are this version of the facts. There there is a version two, which lends to all the other little catchphrases, the fake news and the whatnot is that there is definitely a version two on a lot of, a lot of subjects. Maybe not every subject. And, and we're not saying that, that facts aren't facts, but if you compile statistics the right way, you can make a fact out of whatever you I, want. I just find it interesting that this is not a novel concept. It just seems like in, in this particular political climate, it's, it's it, somehow or another, we find this to be something that has just popped up all of a sudden, which I don't think is true. It's like, for 50 years, I'm sure that you've heard people say that there are two sides to every story. So, like, that's been around. It's actually this, it's the spirit of exactly what the fuck we're talking about right now. Well, I remember when I was getting interviewed by a cop once, and he said there was three. Well, that's fine. The point is so, there are multiple. So the point Ethan is there are multiple. gets involved in drugs and alcohol, gets arrested <laughs> a bunch, and is a fucking piece of shit human being. He should go to the military. He should not join the military to get his fucking life back on track. Don't take the bait. I don't, I don't, I don't. You're going to talk him out of it. You're going to have him be in drug rehab and be a useless person to society. Because there's a lot of people that are in that situation. I mean, it, uh, uh, when, if we're going to go on that specific, then I have I have two options of... The, the a, first option is avoiding this conversation altogether. Yeah, it's not happening. Sorry. Um, is Option A is a, a state-run rehab or a state-run military. They're both shit options. So How is that's it, a separate there's not thing. A lot of state run, there's not a lot of state-run rehabs, by the way. I just want to throw that out. And there's there's state-mandated, maybe? There's not a lot of state-run militaries, either. There, there's only one. <laughs> you said there's not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I mean, in fairness, the only state-run uh, rehab program is prison. What's the state-run military? I, I'm agreeing the with you. The military? Like, that's, I'm agreeing with Government you, Government-run military? The, that would be the state. No, uh, I'm sorry. Well, uh, capital S, like secretary. Right. Uh, sure. Uh, I, yeah. I, when I, uh, I, yeah, that's one of the issues of being an American. That's a problem. So you're is saying that when you say the saying state, somebody going to rehab or really talking military about the military is the same. In your what was the question? Well, when rehab is jail, and, so going and to military, jail or going to the military is pretty much the same. I don't know. If I those are the only binary options, then um, obviously jail is not a. Well, no. If, if those are the only options. He's saying that they're the same. Well, if he accepts your I mean, argument at that particular face value, then he, w I would imagine, you know, he would have to say military. He's not an idiot, but I think that. You no, know, wait, he, he said he that might they're be an the idiot, same. Guess, well, they're definitely not the same. <laughs> I, I disagree yeah, with so that. You don't think that? Do you think every you support every parent talking their child out of going in the military? Yes, I would like. I would well, like. Well, where, I would like. Where, where do you go? Where, where, I would. I would like. I. I uh, I would so, like to see. I would like to see what 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 our state-run military would do with all the bullshit conflicts that we are in right now. If we didn't have the volunteers to do it, if there's anybody that's actually listening to this podcast and you're looking for content that makes any fucking linear sense, no, you have found the wrong fucking podcast. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so so uh, well, let's let's look at. <coughs> The statistic for successful people that have been in the military and got out versus the people that have been successful going to college, graduating. I guarantee the statistics hired for joining the military and being a successful human being in society 
versus people going to college. I think a large majority okay, so of presidents sucks, have been Eagle Scouts. I mean, so is, would that, you, is that advocating Boy Scouts for everyone? No. Okay. I don't think Trump is a Boy Scout. <laughs> and I know that Obama wasn't. Hillary wasn't either. That's Well, maybe. She could be now, but, but she have wasn't more, then. But have more people been she wasn't presidents president that were not Eagle Scouts? I don't know the statistic. I'm saying there's a, there's a large number of presidents that have been Eagle Scouts. But I guarantee you. The question you, was, is that advocating just because no, people because of it's power not a, have, have, it's have, not have a higher done percentage. this? It's not a higher percentage. I mean, there. Um, well, we got a phone. We should look at this. If we're, I mean, I, the, I, I believe the statistic of, of people that have been on the moon have been Eagle Scouts. I think the percentage of the people gonna, if, on the moon were astronauts, too. What's the point? Well, the, the large the large majority of astronauts, of U.S. astronauts, have been Eagle Scouts. That's a, that's a, that's a fact. What the I hell does this have to do bullshit. with anything that we're talking he about? He said Eagle Scouts. I'm, I'm pretty sure Germany at least does that. I like the idea they have you either do one year of military <laughs> service or two years of public civil service. <laughs> you actually have that option. In order to be a prime minister? No, no, mandatory. Prime minister. Mandatory. Mandatory. Oh, you mean as, oh, a oh, as a citizen? Yeah. Oh, as a, well, as a, as I'm okay citizen. with that. As a citizen. I'm actually. I, I, I can I like the idea because yeah, I think I'm a lot not, of people would sure. be like, I don't want to go to the military. It's like, all right, well, you do two years of community service. I mean, I mean I'm okay with that. I, I mean, I, don't with I that think at all. that would fucking turn. Uh, it's it's like the so the state of Tennessee is a side uh, side conversation, but the state of Tennessee does not allow individuals uh, to continue their food stamps after 90 days unless they have a kid. Uh, unless they have had a job 20 hours a week or unless they've had a certain amount of hours of community service. I mean, I'm okay with that. I mean, I don't want to give people free shit without them you know, having uh, uh, that's um, a good plan. 100% for that. And but, so, like, yeah, go ahead. No, j- just, I mean, so going back to, uh, are we going with Steve here? Going back to Steve's idea that, about Germany, I, I, I think that there are a lot of folks you that, mean that. Sean? Whatever. Sean. <laughs> uh, going back to Sean's point, and where the hell is Jim at, by the way? Is he still in the shitter? Hey, you better get me a drink. I'm out. Um, I, I do. It's important that we have individuals that that can appreciate some of the some of these jobs that we have on an everyday basis. I do think it's important for folks to appreciate the military. I don't care if you're like, if you're anti killing people, that's fine. But we still need to have a fucking military. And if if you want to be in, if you want to be a citizen, I think it's a it's a decent idea to have a public service My requirement kid, too. I, I get I, I I get that. There's 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 two problems with that. Is that in a quote free society, a compelled action is is problematic. But the second part being, with the way our military you take tests for driver's license all the time, you don't have to drive. The um, you don't have to drive. The that's not accurate. The second. Fuck! I lost my train of thought. Damn it! It's because the first one was terrible. No, it's not. You don't have to drive. It is a privilege to drive. It's not a right. I mean, I'm so I didn't say it was a right. That's that's not at all what I said. But to, but to, but to say that you are able to exist in today's in in today's economy without having a motorized vehicle. I mean, you're going to be working a, a, a low-dollar job unless you live in a large town that has public transit. I'm pretty sure most people that, right now, especially in the coronavirus action, most people without your specific job, without my specific job, doesn't have a job with his specific job. This room is a bad example. But, I mean, we have an employee We, we have an employee that works part-time for us that is has an office job that is now working from home. Our accounting company um, that we hire... The, all of their employees are working from home right now is a great example of technology letting people work from home. So that, that, that's, this is another example of, of that may be a fact where technology has allowed us to have a higher percentage of individuals working from home. But I think a, another fact would be we are a service economy primarily. True. So if we are a service economy primarily, and we have individuals that work at Chick-fil-A or e-vape shops or whatever, they're not making twenty five dollars an hour. That we're will okay allow with the them. real name right there. Yes. What real name? Evape. We're okay I, with that was, real name. I was making. Is that a real thing? Yeah, that is a real thing. I was uh, just. Okay, I was trying to continue <laughs> the, the, down the, the. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So guy. is Trifactor Farms and a veteran. Today's future. podcast <laughs> is sponsored by Evape. Get your electronic cigarettes, pal. North yeah. Knoxville. The point was uh, you need to have a driver's license in today's economy unless you are working for a tech company or in, in my particular industry. Otherwise, you cannot afford to make $10 an hour to thumb it or Uber or whatever without having that. So I think your original point was something about a necessity. I can't remember how the hell you got to that point. No, we're talking about the... It's problematic that you would force somebody to be an Eagle Scout and or do public service in a free economy. We, we do that stuff all the time. Like we force folks to drive a, a certain speed limit. I mean, like, th- you, you've got to find a better response to that than that. I mean, that, that just doesn't work. 
So your son wants to join the military. <laughs> why are you talking if about? He is, if he is adamant about it, that's fine. But well, why would you? What, what would be your reason behind talking him out of it? Because I don't want. Psychology. I don't. I don't want Anthony. I don't want Anthony to be my actual child. Anthony's I, one of. I, uh, you wouldn't want him to be. You wouldn't want your son to be my. I don't know anything about me? this Anthony guy, but I would imagine that this Anthony guy was probably fucked up before he went to the military. I mean, I, I'm sorry. Like, I'm yeah, sure that there. I'm sure that there are instances where you go to the military. The military itself fucks you up, and you had certain sort of there, genetic markers that were going to fester and whatever. But I would think that a lot of this has to do with who are you at 18, that would allow the next X amount of time to develop you into whatever so, it is that your thing is a bad. So, you look at my very very close friends that. I'm still friends with that was in the military. You have um, a detective, LAPD. You have a guy that just ran for sheriff for Louisiana. He didn't he didn't win, but he he ran for sheriff. So um, he's a cop. You got a guy Steven Seagal is a sheriff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Louisiana, but whatever. Well, that's that's good. Cause Who wouldn't want to be Steven Seagal? <laughs> exactly. Um, Apparently, you Seth. You have. I mean, a majority of. Of I would say the fifteen to twenty people that we communicate on a daily basis with, <laughs> one is a bartender. The rest of them are very successful in life. How many died over there doing something? That's well, a separate topic, though. Like, oh, hold, well, on, hold on, none hold on, of hold the people on my chat. Well, because well, you're chatting with, but but that's a different <laughs> argument, though. That's a different argument. So Seth is saying that he wouldn't want them to turn out to be Anthony. We gave specific examples of how that may not right. actually be the case, and then you switch the argument by saying how many people died. So which one is it? Is it you don't want them to be Anthony, or you don't want them to be Anthony? And well, a second thing is you don't want them to die. Which one is it, or that, is it all of them? On that case, you have a higher percentage of your kid dying in a car accident, so you probably shouldn't put them in a car. That's fair. So you, when your son wants to get a driver's license, but according, according, right, according, you to, need to, according to I support any parent who de- talks their kids out of getting a driver's license. If we're talking about deaths, if but according, we're to, about but them according dying, to driver's license and, and driving is requirement to live in this according society, to who uh, uh, to live in this society. I, uh, that, that's not at all what I said. I didn't say that. I said it was a necessity. I didn't say it was a requirement. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. It's different. It's, it's absolutely okay. it's absolutely it's a necessity different. to function as in, in this yeah. society to have a driver's license, right? I, I, I don't know why I, you're so anti-military. I'm not anti-military. You're just anti your kids' military. I'm anti what we what the military does. How's that? What does the military do? What does it do? You, you said I'm anti what they do. So what is they do? What do they do that you are anti? What is they be doing? <laughs> what do <laughs> what they you doing over do? there, bitch? <laughs> That you're anti. <laughs> what about. you doing with my boy? <laughs> what I'm are we? What, James, like, okay, bitch. so Anthony being the example is Good for people. for your and I's safe for 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 your and I's for for this group of people's safety here at home, which is the reason they were sent. When Anthony went to Iraq or Afghanistan, whichever or both, um, when he went to Afghanistan, what was the positive for you and I? What did he pay? And what was it paying for? Um, well, I mean, it's it's very easy to say that I don't think there's anything done. Um, but it's easy to say maybe we should have been over there sooner and then 9-11 didn't happen. Yeah, we did so, have intelligence briefings that said that these things could occur. What I'm saying is, yeah, if we would have reacted sooner yeah, and agreeing. stopped Osama bin Laden and sent some people mm-hmm. over, and we lost, let's say, more military people than what we currently lost, but we saved 2,000 innocent lives that didn't sign up to die, Right. it's easy to go back in time and go, all right, we did this, so this didn't happen. Sure, but okay, so... It's not easy to say... What we're doing over there did not stop something future happening. Sure. So, so is it but a why does return on investment type thing? Is that well, that's your issue? Why what? does why does why did Obama or uh, Obama? <laughs> why did uh, <laughs> Bin Laden exist? Blowback. Because that's why he existed. There's bad people in the world. But why did he exist? Why did why because did he we, why did his group have we power? We put him into because to power people to fight the Mujahideen. We uh, in that's the also 70s. true. That's also it true. is true. Yeah. Right. We did. Well, the the problem is. Like in the Middle East, you know, and everyone thinks that uh, oh, the middle, all the Middle East, every fucking raghead. That's not a racist thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, 
I, I won't edit that out in post, but I'll pretend like I will. Okay. Did you say egghead? Um, egghead. <laughs> egghead. Bunch of Every smart egghead. asses. It's a bunch of assholes. <laughs> but then you look at you look at uh, Saudi Arabia. Do you have a bunch of Saudi? No, because they're westernized. They have money. There were more Saudis on the planes than there were any other. Oh, uh, I was just thinking. Yeah. So like uh, the, uh, on all of the planes that went in that were in nine eleven, all there were like eighty percent of them. Uh, those terrorists were. Saudi Arabian uh, nationals. Not, That's not. That's one hundred percent true. Okay. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't disagree with you. Okay, okay. But they were not like okay. If if you look at Dubai, does Dubai have the same problems as, as Iraq? No, not at all. Because it, it's Vegas. It's a capitalist economy. Sure, exactly. a, absolutely. Sure, sure. And, and, and so you have the problem with poor. You have the problem with. I mean, and and then disenfranchised. That, that is every society. Around the problem is these super poor countries have a problem with countries like America that everything's free and and that thing. So they are imposing their will against America. They don't like Christianity. They don't like you know the whole Haji. Like I don't have a problem with Muslims. Like Muslim religion is not. It's actually peaceful. It is a peaceful. Mm-hmm. It is a peaceful yeah. religion. But but you know America has been like every Muslim's an asshole. But it's not. It's extreme. Just like when you look at the Westboro Baptist, Baptist, Baptist Church. Church. Yeah. yeah. Like it, if you just look at them, you're like fucking Baptists. They're crazy. Yeah. They're Those blowing up. They're pastors. blowing up fucking abortion clinics. These people are fucking <laughs> yeah, crazy. They're yeah. like they're protesting at you know military funerals, saying that's yeah. God's will for you fucking allowing homosexuality. Yeah. You know. And so you have these extremists all over the place. Have you guys seen the Looming Tower? I have the not. The Pisa? It's a. It's funny. <laughs> the Looming Tower is a documentary. It was like a maybe eight or ten episode documentary on Hulu, and it talks a lot about uh, the things, the events that led up to nine eleven. So it's everything that happened prior to nine eleven, including the idea that the FBI and the CIA were not communicating at all, and they were at odds with one another about facts. Mm-hmm. It is. Fantastic! You should look it up. Well, actually, the CIA blew up the towers. There was never any. <laughs> there was Jeff no. Fuel there was not no All right, we will have we, we we will we will set aside we will we will, we will set aside at least a couple episodes of complete tinfoil hat shows where we'll get no. But but really though, fun. anybody who's actually listening, the two and a half people that are listening, which includes our our uh, vertically challenged individuals, um, point seven. We really the point seven. We. <laughs> Really, I highly recommend the Living Tower uh, as a documentary series. It is phenomenal. Really, okay. it is. So, but I, I mean, fuck. I, I, my, we were going down the military thing, but we were also talking. We so we've got a half a dozen things that are going on that we never finish because we go down fucking rabbit holes all the time. Which is normal. That's what's it. That's the point. That's the point. Is, of it, this. is that the point, really? I mean, so so now we're adding uh, a seventh. Of what the point is? That that's the, that's the next well, thing we're talking uh, about. Did, Free flowing minds, man. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. If we were, if, if all right, if we were sitting around the four of us, in five, the camper, five, oh, this is five. Like, like the second really official episode. Like, I, I we're really gonna hone it down to a lot better as this goes on. Shit. I'm assuming. I'm glad you're optimistic. <laughs> I'm not. I'm thinking it's gonna get worse. Was the first but one the one that I was I'm not just at? trying to pull a Trump, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying we to didn't. We didn't do anything thing. with the first one. No, I, I mean I've got it, but okay. No. All right. So for those of you out there, that's going to be a special DVD edition. That's our hundredth episode. That's our hundredth episode. We're not going to we're not going to make actually ninety eight more of these, but uh, <laughs> we are where we are. I hope we I hope we keep going. It'd be fun. Um, All right. So we we're we're talking about military. We're also talking about why are we not able to to criticize uh, certain leaders that we uh, I don't even know what way to describe it. We like them, maybe we vote for them. What is it? I, mean, I don't. I don't know how to. We have base. I mean, there's there's base that. issues that we want. Fair. Well, I, mean, I think I think the problem is where, you know, <laughs> Tom, Bill, when, when Bill, Lloyd, when, that's not gonna work either. <laughs> when we, go I back, know the guy. He's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> when we go back and forth on the whole uh, Trump thing, and I'm like, oh, you'd rather have fucking Bernie Sanders, and you say what? Well, so it's it's. What do you what do you usually say when I'm like, oh, you're gonna have Bernie Sanders? Oh, I don't know what do I say. You always like, I don't think that's a, it's an if or and. Right, it, right, because it goes back to what I'm saying. I'm I'm saying it's, look, I mean, if if there is if there are things that Trump would do, I could get behind the guy. I mean, I, I guess what I'm saying is I'm open minded enough to say let's criticize the guy where we are able to. Okay, so to... and uh, hold on, okay. God damn it. Sorry. Um and 
it's okay to say mm. that somebody. I know, right? Like, we got to raise our damn hands around here. This motherfucker never does this shit. No, nope, I'll interrupt again. I, I'm shocked. Uh, my point is, it's not that I'm looking for somebody else because, like, that's not a part of my argument. My, if my argument was, well, Bernie would do this better, like, there's an example. That's not really my argument. My argument is, man, I just want whoever's in power to just do whatever it is that I'm asking of to to be better. I guess is all I'm saying. That that was my little legitimate. That was my interruption. Good. Is, I'm glad you is, shut the fuck up and let me finish my thought. Is what? So the the my, my rebuttal to. <laughs> You gotta raise your hand higher. Um, My rebuttal to that is, you're starving. Don't fucking complain that I gave you an apple. Tell me something else that you want to eat. Like I'm not a mind reader. You can't just say you don't want to eat. Right, right, but the fucking starve. Sure, but the implication there is, is I'm not, I'm not offering uh, an alternative that should have been done. So when we're talking about what Trump could have done with this coronavirus thing, I'm saying that he, the alternative is. I'm not saying that he fucked it up. I'm saying he fucked it up and he should have said it sooner. No, there's nothing wrong with coronavirus. It's going to blow over. It's like we have uh, we, Trump. done in summer. Yeah, it, well, no, he it's actually said it was a miracle. It's going to be like a miracle. <laughs> he did that like swoosh thing, like the Nike swoosh and thing. And it will. It's, it's being over-exaggerated. Oh. Is this comedy on? No, I'm dead serious. Like, I, how many people die from the flu? I don't know what the flu has to do with this. It's. Uh, it's a disease 30, that spreads. 30, 40, a virus that spreads. Sure, a disease. Right. right. It, which we have a vaccine for, because it's rapid. But they so we have a, vac- a vaccine. We have a vaccine that was for, the most prevalent the year prior because it takes that long to actually crank it. But it's out. killed thirty nine thousand people this year. Exactly. That uh, is the I'm sorry, not flu. Not a twenty three thousand. What's the that point? We have never experienced a pandemic of. Well, how many people have died from Corona? I mean, we can look it up if you want. I, I, I guess I just don't. What, what's I your point? You. Then? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, like, okay, so. I mean, how many babies die from uh, uh, complications of birth? I mean, America ranks, I think it, last I looked, it was like right above fucking Serbia. <clears throat> an infant mortality rate. So, what's the coronavirus in the United States right now? Around Corona, around U.S. Corona death yeah, total hits 300. Corona that's as of five minutes ago. 300. So, yeah. 0.01%. Right. So it, it's tested. a little bit. Okay. Hold on. So let, can we just back up just a little bit? So it, it's it's not that is it only going to kill X amount of people. Let, let, me, let me just give me 45 seconds. Okay. The, the larger issue is right now we have uh, we have hospital systems that don't have enough equipment outside of maybe some ICUs. That don't have enough medical medical equipment. That if this thing did get significantly worse, like Italy, for instance, <laughs> we have we already have folks that are already in ICUs for various reasons, traumas or DKs, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, we have a finite number of ventilators. Like the other day, at, in our particular unit, we had one additional ventilator left, and we had like four beds available. So like if we have four people that come in and they all need vents, like we're bagging them all night. So the, the issue isn't oh my god, people are gonna die. Like at the end of the day, it's more about the system itself, if this gets worse, can't sustain having large numbers of folks coming in and even us. living. Like, forget about dying. Like, we, we don't we we don't have the ability to have an extra twenty percent ICU admissions. Like, th- that's the conversation. It's not. No, oh my no, God, they're no, gonna no, die. No. And like, their flu is gonna kill people. I'm, I'm that's not, all I'm the saying. Death panels that everyone made made out to the Obamacare to be like, oh, we're gonna have all these death panels. That is literally what hospitals are gonna have to start doing is triaging. Okay. All right. right. So what, what patient so pick and a, choose? What pick and choose who the highest lives. likelihood right. of surviving. That's what Italy is doing as we speak. Okay. Right. So right. we're we're gonna get on Italy here in a second. Okay. But um, so we don't give a fuck about the flu. We could care about multiple things simultaneously. Well, I'm just saying, there's more people dying from the flu. Why do we not care about that being an epidemic? We do. We disagree. offer vaccines. We, we yeah, we've just kind of accepted that as a norm. They're like, yeah. So, uh, so what are you saying? You're saying I'm just saying there's twenty three thousand the dollars. There's twenty three thousand deaths mm-hmm. with the flu this year so far. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've also had an increase of people getting the flu. Mm-hmm. The average runs around two hundred thousand deaths. Okay. Right now we've had thirty nine, or two hundred. Usually it's two hundred thousand. We've had thirty nine, three hundred ninety thousand. Reported cases. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Case, why is that number up? I can tell you. People get the flu. They think it's coronavirus. Now they're going to the hospital. So we're having a lot more reported cases. So we, we're still having twenty three thousand deaths, but we've only had how many with the flu? So I mean, with Corona. 
You said 200? Uh, 300 as of five minutes ago. 300 as of five minutes ago. Why do we care more about the coronavirus Unless than we do about the flu? I, I'm not Three saying Three times that more contagious than the flu. I, I don't care. About, I don't, I, it so, doesn't matter. So, I, so is the common I, the, cold. The, the rate of contagiancy does matter. No, it doesn't if it's not killing people. I'm not accepting the argument. I'm saying I care about both of not, them, and I'm the only the motherfucker rate. here that works in healthcare. Like, I care about both. Like, I can care about both. But well, like, what I'm saying like, is... I, it's you, okay to care about both. You can care about both. both. I agree with that. But there's more people dying of the flu than the coronavirus. So why was this not an epidemic last year? What, the flu, you mean? The flu, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't disagree. It's, it's very fucked up that we've just kind of... It's, it's commonplace now. It's common. Like, like, we're okay with, I mean, you know, 30,000 30, people dying from the flu. That's okay. But we can't have 300... 300 people die from coronavirus, and oh my no, God, we uh, got to fucking change on. everything. We don't have enough medical staff. We don't have enough equipment. We don't have. So, do we just not fucking care about those people that die? No. I mean, I, how many people that's... die of hunger every year? I mean, we we disregard that. I mean, you, yeah, you, you could look at many a different. I, 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 I don't <laughs> understand what the hell we're actually talking about right now. So, well, I, so I'm I, just wondering why we close schools. Why, what, like, if we've had, you know, if the kill rate on the flu is 7.2% mm-hmm. and the kill rate on the coronavirus is 5.1%. Made up stats. No, it's not. Do you want me to show you? If you're saying why haven't we closed uh, schools, why haven't we closed restaurants, that's just sort of thing. Can you let me finish? If we're saying why haven't we done any of those things, I, I, I would say, I mean, it, it that's a larger issue of we do have, it's multifaceted. We, we do have a vaccine for certain strains of flu, assuming that we get it correct. Second thing is, we know what the death rate typically is yearly. Should we care more about that? Sure, absolutely. But we have individuals that are admitted to the hospital every year. Where we like we offer a flu vaccine for every person that walks through the door, no matter what, and a significant portion of individuals turn that down, uh, which is absurd. So, I, I don't, th- I don't think that anybody in healthcare deems flu less of a threat than coronavirus. I think we know that the flu virus that we have had is a steady killer. We don't know what this will do, I think. Okay. So how many people have been diagnosed in the United States? You just add that up on your thing. Uh, of the coronavirus, mean? Coronavirus, yeah. Uh, give me a second. Sorry. I have a side note while we're Dead doing air. some research. Um, <coughs> I did. Uh, I was listening to a podcast in this... Uh, Michael, are you cheating on us? Osterholm, yes, I am all the time. Um, was talking about how pulling kids out of school was probably not the best for the greater good, in the sense that um, the majority of of nurses and and doctors have kids and don't have anywhere to put them. As of two days, ten thousand five hundred. That's as so, of two days ago. There's ten thousand five hundred people in the United States that have the coronavirus currently. And well, that are known. well, forty-eight hours ago, that are known, that are diagnosed. So, right, ten thousand people. Mm-hmm. So, ten thousand people <coughs> are causing a rush on our medical society. If that number stays at ten thousand, no, we're sa- we're saying currently. We're not talking about future. That's that's the concern. Max. No, the the, the yeah, media the, the, is reporting that hospitals don't have equipment. We They're, don't. We we don't. So ten thousand people in the United States. How many people in Tennessee? Right, but but here. So That's so not everybody hold on. Has it. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So it takes a couple of days to get this test back. So if you come in with a respiratory illness of any sort whatsoever, so like the five of us in this room, if we come in and, we, and we're coughing mm-hmm. and we have a fever for any reason, any origin, any 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 reason whatsoever. We are using that particular PPE, that, that personal protective equipment, to go into that room. And so it may only be 15,000 confirmed cases right now, but the, like half of the people in the unit right now are, are on droplet and contact precautions for this because they haven't been ruled out as negative yet. And so it's less about, well, there's only 15,000 people that have it. That's true, but there are more folks, in, in like exponentially more folks that we haven't ruled out as negative that we have to use that equipment on because we have to assume that they are infected until we get the negative. And um, so the real answer, if you guys would have done your homework, is... is I didn't being, know there was homework. There was mm. homework on this. Oh. So um, <laughs> the, the real reason is this, is our government and the media put out a health scare. Oh, my God, coronavirus is killing people. Everyone's going to fucking die. 
start hoarding fucking toilet paper, fucking sit in your home, we're canceling school, and all that kind of stuff. And you know what happened? Everybody who got the flu, all the people that, like, they're just getting the flu, just like normal flu season, what'd they do? Oh, my God, I don't have the flu. I have the coronavirus. That's why the average for yearly reported hospitalization for the flu is 200,000. This year, we've had 390,000 people that were hospitalized because of the flu. Not for the coronavirus, because of the flu. So because of this mass hysteria, we've caused 190,000 people to go to the hospital more than the prior year. So, and so that's putting a drain on the medical staff. What do you propose? It's, the propose is, why are we making such a big deal of it right now when it's not a big deal? Because it, it, if a larger portion of the community gets infected, it is not sustainable in the healthcare system. It's not. Right. Like, I don't it, care about shit paper. Like, people will die. So, like, okay. So, it, 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 it is a big deal. It's, it's not killing people it, as much as the flu. It, it, okay. So, the question, the, the real question at hand is, is that it is a big deal. And there's. Is the flu a big deal? No, it, it, it is a big deal in the sense that it's adding to an already stressed system. It is a big deal. But the, the I think what you're what I'm hearing what you're saying at least is that is that it's been it's getting overblown to the sense that it's 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 it the media and 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 the conversation is getting getting us in general into a a, a, a hysteric that is going past what the, how big of a deal it is. It is a big deal on a, on a on a one to ten scale. It's a seven as far as a big deal, but through the, through the information channels and everything that's going on is we got it up to like a 15 somehow even though the scale only goes to 10 is that it's it's overblown it, it's getting overblown in the sense it, 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 that's what I'm hearing at least is that well, it's getting overblown is that if we if we were if we could slow down and rationalize what's happening and really focus in and and, and get somebody in charge that actually can speak clearly on the subject <laughs> and let us help let us help ourselves in the process that it wouldn't be as big a deal as it is if it was disseminated correctly. I, and I, I think that's I, I wanna, what the issue is. I want to know the numbers of people that went to the hospital because they thought they had the coronavirus versus the percentage that actually had the coronavirus. It's and, too and, early right now to answer that question. It really is. Well, it's, it's not too it, early. I work in healthcare, goddammit. Like, it is too early. Like, we don't know the answer to that yet, man. That is, no, that's a... You don't know the answer to that. Nobody knows the answer to that. Yes, there's a simple answer of how many people came in saying I had the coronavirus and how many people did not have the coronavirus. That There's a number out there. Or, or picked it up in there, the waiting room while they were I mean, sitting there. there it's not like, I don't know what the... We don't know. Like, the gravity it, 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 on it, Mars it, is. Well, well I, that's I not think a, the scientists could probably figure that out. That's not yeah. a stat. That's but that's not a stat that they're they're taking. They're tracking. They're not. No. That's not a stat they're tracking. They're, they're, they're not, not a, a stat. Not a stat they're tracking. But you said there's no way to know that. There's, there's not that. a way to know. Like right now, there's not. I mean, like, is there somebody? There's check- a way to know it. The, 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 there could be, but that's not important. Not. It's not. Like if, if you're walking into the emergency room right now, that number is fluid. As of like we first had this conversation, what five minutes ago? Like the number is fluid. Like it changes right now, and in five minutes it's different. And right. We don't but, have. We don't. So hold okay. On, we don't, okay. Hold on. Hold on. We don't like a lot of these tests. We don't get it back for like three or four days. Okay, but what so. I'm saying is, you, you can you can define a number of how many people have the coronavirus, but you can't define a number of how many people have been tested for the coronavirus. Uh, at my particular institution, or is, no, is, I'm is, talking in general. Like you can put out a stat how many people have the coronavirus, but you can't put out a stat that says how many people have been tested. I don't know if the, I don't know if that's covered in other places, like the 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 place that a colleague of mine works at, like they're doing it at a, at a, at a local community health center. I don't know if they're tracking that. Well, I mean, I don't I'm sure I don't fucking know. insurance companies are getting billed and shit for that. What's well, a grant? So, so uh, I mean, they, they don't. But have well, it's still grant. Someone's getting paid. I mean, I, that test, I don't know. I, they, I, I don't know. You don't know, but th- I'm saying there's a stat out there. And so the 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 question is for me is, are we using up all these resources because there's a mass hysteria of, oh my god, coronavirus? Everyone who's got a sore throat, everyone who's like thinks anything, they're going to the hospital which is putting a drain on the medical society, which is making you use another mask and then another gloves and another stuff. So it's, it's causing a drain. And so I don't know, maybe, it, maybe coronavirus is fucking 
the the zombie apocalypse. I don't think that's true, mm. but I but I do think that that if I don't take precautions when I walk into a room and we just and we, and we don't put droplet and contact precautions on a person and I get infected and then now I come home I give it to to you four clowns and I give it to whomever that I I mean bef- if we don't figure out a way to to stop the transmission before we know it like everybody in, in this particular city is is infected by it so I guess what I'm what I said what do you do propose you hold on if I'm saying what do you propose I'm saying like give me a give me an alternative like either I walk in the room with with PPP a PPE on and this person comes in with these particular symptoms, or I just pass them at like Walmart when I'm getting cheese or something, and I still get infected that way. But then okay. why don't you take those same precautions for the flu? We do. So then nothing's changed. What do you mean nothing's changed? We, we, we have a set amount of cases that we assume that we have the flu every year. Yeah, so if, if, somebody, had, if somebody has the flu, mm-hmm. if you think somebody has the flu, mm-hmm. or you think somebody has a coronavirus, mm-hmm. same precautions. Correct. So we're talking 390,000 flu cases, and what are we saying? Well, part of it is it's, it's going to be on top of at this point. On top of the flu. Uh, right. Correct. Right. Exactly. So, uh, and okay. that, that's my point I'm trying to make. Right. Is I, the yeah. drain isn't on the coronavirus. The drain is the mass hysteria costing everyone who has the flu to All right, double the right. rate and go to the hospital. But so, if they don't go in, then we get it at Target. And when the infection rate gets higher. Okay, so uh, let me let me. That's, that, that's what I'm saying is the alternative. Like, if there's a different alternative, man, I'm happy to no, to, the to entertain that. But so I mean, so more people are getting the flu now. So no, okay, no, they're just testing positive now. I want for jump. the reasons that you described. That's right. what I'm saying. I mean, so, like most people, like, you get sick, you try to wait that shit out. You're like, I don't want to go to the doctor. Sure. I, it's just the flu. I'm sure. Just, I'm gonna go to Walgreens get some get some medicine. Air flu or whatever. A lot of people, a lot of people don't go. But Which is prophylactic anyway because it's a viral uh, infection. Uh, the, like Whatever the, the cure for the flu is, Tamiflu. It's not a cure. Right, it's, it's, cure, it's prophylactic. It's, 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 it's a, a symptom, viral infection. It's a, but, issue, it's a symptomatic. Yeah. But, but you uh, have to address. take it within, was it 24, 48 hours? Yeah, even then it just shortens it by like 18 it. hours. It's uh, how many people awesome. wait two days uh, before they uh, Most people would wait two days. I would think so. To make sure they were sick <laughs> before they even go to sure, the doctor. It's like, so. oh, I got the sniffles. I need to go get tested for the flu to where I might be able to get Tamiflu. Not Not happen. Very few people are no, able to and, get and, prescribed and, Tamiflu. And, and that, that, that's what I'm saying. Because you don't go to the doctor is, until you feel like shit. Or most people. Because most well, people can't fucking afford to go to the doctor. When you close restaurants and you close all this stuff, you're causing a mass hysteria. Which is causing the people that are not sick to go to the hospital where they get sick. How is this causing a mass hysteria? Ho- hold on, real quick. I, 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 I agree with the. Hold on. I, I agree with the the fact that there's a, there's going to be an economic loss as as a result of this. I, like I understand that and appreciate that. My my counter to that though is if if we do nothing, if we don't uh, warn and educate the public about this, and everybody actually does get infected, then businesses will be done for a significant amount of time because people will actually die. There'll be more folks that will die because there'll be more folks infected. So, so the and more importantly, you can't and you we can't, can't to, treat them and right. we can't treat them because right. we don't actually have the bed uh, capacity to have a. It, it, I don't know why we're comparing it to the flu, but if we're going to continue that analogy, we don't have enough to, to even like have half of what our flu cases are on top of what our normal cases are, and the half flu cases being coronavirus. Right. We don't have the capacity to do that now, which is why we are acting in the way in which we should educate so, the public. Is what I'm saying. Would I be correct to assume the people on the flu, if they are hospitalized, do not have to be put on ventilators? With the flu? Unlikely. From the flu. Mo- most of the flu. Fo- well, gosh, I don't know how to. I, I, there's. You can be. I know you can have complications. I, I with think. The flu it, I, I think it's a. I, I would argue probably without even looking at statistics that if you are old over the age of 50, I would say 51% of those individuals at least are going to be ventilated because they have multiple comorbidities going on also. All you right. don't just walk in and you're like a healthy person mm-hmm. and your cholesterol's good and you're, you know what I mean? Like if you're walking in and you have the flu and you're not able to actually sort of quote unquote beat it at home, probably have underlying heart disease, hyperlipidemia, wow. maybe you're a diabetic. Those other things are contributing to it also. It's not necessarily the fact that the flu is getting you. It's that your body is just not strong enough for lack of a better phrase to fight this off yourself. Right. And so, you know, that's why a younger okay. person can fight this off a little bit better. They don't have all those... with, as far as like what hospitals would have to do if someone came. We need more ventilators. Versus, we need more PPE. Versus, well, versus the the coronavirus. If they actually are treating them, right, completely the same. Yeah, I mean, if they are requiring the same equipment, same. You know, they are. Yeah. So realistically, yeah. My, my my the real question here is, mm-hmm. to use your game, what's the um, what's the proposal on how it should be, all the time, like. 
what levels, like what numbers of equipment should hospitals have all the time to be prepared in this, I mean, once in a, what, six year, 10 year, what are we talking about? So, so you're saying what would make this less of a drain on the on the hospital system? Right. How could how how could we reasonably, uh, fuck reasonably? How could we actually be prepared for this specific situation that we're in right, right now? Right. We, yeah, like sure, how, sure, like sure, sure. If, if we need we need double the ICU beds first of all, double. Okay. Just right offhand. So at uh, I mean here locally we have like a hundred maybe ICU beds. I'm just thinking off the top of my head, maybe a little bit more than that. We okay. probably need double that, really. Uh, I think we only have uh, maybe sixty or seventy vents at one given time. Okay. It's not one to one, so like it's not right. one vent for every room. Like that's not a thing. Um, we need staff. I mean, hell, we don't have enough staff. For, like I could go in anytime I want to. Like I'm, so, I'm scheduled three days a week. I, I for the most part go in whenever the fuck I want to go in. Right. For the most part, which means so that we don't you, have. Are you guys out of ventilators right now? We're not out of ventilators now, but we. we we're pretty close. So, like uh, last so last Sunday, hold on a second. Last Sunday, this is before any uh, anything was shut down. We had one extra vent where I work. One extra vent left in the hospital that was not currently used. Okay, so, so. how many people in UT Hospital are on a ventilator that Texas. has coronavirus? UT Texas. <laughs> right now, there are no confirmed cases at UT Hospital. So, as yeah. of uh, noon today. So you guys being out of ventilators has nothing to do with the coronavirus. Right. You but guys are just, you need more anyway. We but need the, more anyway. And right, we also know that if, that it, is, if it did get worse, we do need them. Well, right. But the issue I, is. I, yeah. I, I, then I agree with you that the hospital needs more stuff. Right. Because the coronavirus isn't affecting you. Uh, it isn't affecting us yet, but yeah, it, sure, I can agree with but that. Like you're, you're currently saying, we don't have enough stuff. We don't. We don't have enough. We don't have enough uh, goggles. We don't. We don't have enough uh, uh, gowns. We don't have. We don't have enough uh, N95 so you, masks. Like we don't have any of that. Like we're we're out of that now. We have to ration that well, stuff. Then, then that needs that needs to be that yeah, that I should mean, have nothing to do with coronavirus. This is going to be a big wake up call as far as just even just a natural right. disaster but, okay. response right? but, and the ability to respond. Which is to actually anything. what I'm hoping that we do once. <laughs> like let's, let's say this is the fall and we're looking back on this. Hopefully we have a team that is. Hopefully the person that's in office decides whoever that may be decides that there is a team that says, how can we do this better? Because, like, shit can get a hell of a lot worse than whatever this ends up being. Like, we need to do better the next time. That way this sort of thing doesn't exist. So, well, I mean, okay. so, so your, your, your concept is, or your philosophy is the same as my philosophy. The only difference is you think you want more ventilators. I know we need more beds, ventilators. And I know I need more ammo. I probably have, like, 3,000 <laughs> rounds of ammo in my safe. I'm not hoarding toilet paper and water, right? Because you can, if shit you can buy it with hell, bullets. I can take the whatever you want, water and toilet paper so, from people that interesting was thing. Hoarding. Last so <laughs> last week's I'd been. I'll let you talk. Hold on, just a second. Give me 15 seconds. It, it, interesting enough, like uh, I don't know, four or five days ago, I was out with, I was out with a friend of mine, and uh, uh, we were like Walmart or someplace, and uh, you know, like shit paper was out, and like all this other stuff was out, and we, like we walked past the lawn and garden section, right? And there are, like, it's like nobody had even touched garden seeds, like right. tomato seeds right. and all this stuff. It's like, oh, my God, let's make sure that we buy shit paper. Like, well, shit paper is important, but let's not worry about planting a <laughs> fucking garden. Well, there, there's, like, there's, right, we don't give a fuck about the garden. Let's just make sure my ass is clean. There's, 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 an economics, the there, there's an economics reasoning behind that. Yeah, it is. That means they're dumb. That's what it is. No, it's, 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 a, it's a zero loss. Oh, you're going to use it eventually. Fucking fucking business stupid. major. You're gonna Shit, use, it's dumb. You're fucking dumb. It's fucking dumb. This is this is worse than I don't think any fucking person should ever join the military and I think oh, everyone Jesus. should fight whatever they can to do. You're they should move to fucking there. Canada if they reinstate the fucking draft. Move to Canada. You're just not living that, that down. <laughs> I'm I'm not move to down. Canada. It's cold up there, man. Let, love, okay. Oh, he'll he'll send his kids to Canada so they don't get go in the military. I mean, if, if we're going to draft them to go fight some stupid fucking war, yeah, I'll run them off. Run them off as hard as I can. Well, uh, so if it's if it's don't join the military because you don't want them to fight a war that they shouldn't be in, that's a third argument. So I can actually get behind that to a certain extent because I do think that there are times that we are, we put ourselves in situations we shouldn't be places. And me being military, I agree with you. Cool. Uh, <laughs> but the whole I don't want to be Anthony, whoever that motherfucker is. And uh, what was the second thing? Actually, um, he's a really good death. guy. I'm sure he is. And death. I, you know, I mean, sure, I, they die. I'm not. I'm not saying that they don't die. I'm just saying. Pick your argument. Don't 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 like make your don't make your argument and then work backwards to figure out how you can support it. That's what I'm saying. 
which appears to be what you mean by the don't join the military thing. Oh, there's a mountain, but okay, that's fine. That's a, that's a whole separate, right. more sober version of me going to argue that point. Fantastic. I think what we need to do is we need to do like they did in the 70s with chicken pox. Someone gets the coronavirus, send all your kids over there, get the coronavirus, get, them all get fucked it up. over, <laughs> and then move on. Okay, so uh, realistically, how can we afford, realistically, how can we afford to make sure the right stockpiles of the right things are in place? And this goes, I mean, this goes back to the original conversation. Happy to answer that question. I mean, but this goes back to the original conversation is holding, holding accountable to what matters. May I answer that question? We have a national sure. stockpile. It's, it's classified that they had a, a national stockpile of equipment, respirators. Well, the other thing to me is like, like I, I joked with uh, Blev. I said to Blev, I was like, how fast do they set up a military hospital? It's like a day. And he's like, no, like three hours, four hours. You know, it's like, you know, I, I don't know how many ventilators are available, but we got National Guard bases all over the fucking place. And as far as I've heard so far, at least, we're not setting up military hospitals here and there and everywhere to make sure that the people that need it are, are available. I'm assuming that there is some availability for those well, those items. I, mean, I'm, I, I would think that would be a, a, at least a better use of our military than... Uh, fuck, hold on, hold on. So, so you're, you're. Go ahead, go ahead. I heard a question that was directed at somebody. I, it wasn't FEMA, but I want to say it was somebody with like the National Guard, but something that would be implemented to where you would start building military hospitals. And I want to say it was no more than two or three days ago, and they said we're basically just waiting, and we're, we're waiting for us to be asked. He said we're, we're ready and willing to go. We're just waiting, I guess, for that. I'm assuming that something would have to be put into place. We also need the political, ca- uh, the people capital, which we don't have. Well, th- I think, I think also the problem is has to do with. Um, the same problem with the military on military spending, which I have a huge problem with, is um, the cost. And so, you, when you have the cost of you know three thousand dollars for uh, uh, an M4 missile. or something, no, like an M4 where you can buy one on the street for you know eight hundred bucks, and so there's an overpriced. And I think in the medical equipment supply, there's also a fucking scam where they're overcharging these hospitals. Where the hospital could have two hundred, but because of the price that this medical company wants to charge for a respirator for something you have to have, and I don't know how many brands there are on respirators, probably not a lot. That sounds like socialism to me. We don't want that. No, it's not socialism. It's called gouging. I uh, I'm agreeing with you actually, but what I what what I meant with that was is that uh, what you're against is a capitalist principle, which no, w- it's not a capitalist principle because because. Because the military can go out right now and buy those same weapons off the fucking street cheaper than right. they have their special he, interest groups that are fucking right. selling to the military. It's and the military contract issue, yeah. Sure, I understand. Approving this stuff. Sure. And I believe that the healthcare industry is exactly the same, where this fucking guy who runs this hospital's got a buddy and got influence and shit like that, and they're getting overcharged for their fucking equipment. Because I guarantee those respirators cost them fucking no i'm not saying nickels and dimes but you know it cost them 300 bucks to make and they're selling it for you know fifteen thousand dollars to the hospital because they have a contract for (coughs) whatever right and then you secondarily have the insurance companies in there right i'm saying that that that's a that's a principle of capitalism is what i'm saying no that's not a principle of capitalism because that's inside no capitalism is I can go and make a respirator and sell it to that hospital, but I can't. But it's, it's because it's, they're tied to, tied into contracts that they're able to. Is right. It, is it the company which is saying, a, which hey, is a ca- you which have is to a, buy it from us. Capitalism. This is what you're no, going to have to buy capitalism. it from us at. I, I mean, I, I'm failing. So the, like, the contract is, the contract the con- is capitalism. That, that's what I'm saying is that the contract is capitalism. But, they're, they're, no, but, the, contract, but the contracts are. Um, so I, I, I'm speaking off the hip on, on, on hospitals because I don't know. But talking about I would imagine military. you're right, actually. But. but but we're talking about military. When they buy weapons, they have their buddy who owns this fucking arms dealership and works a contract with this and works, you know, and they're overcharging and they're giving their buddy that contract. That's not capitalism because capitalism would have been like the government going, hey, we're not going to buy these fucking for these guys. We're going to buy these from these people. That is insider trading or whatever you want to fucking call it. And that's the problem. 
these military contracts are going to people that shouldn't get the fucking contract, but they're their buddy or they have special interest groups well, or and, whatever. And it's, it's hard I, to... Con- I think we're actually saying the same thing. Yeah, you are. I, I think, I I think are. we're saying No, but we're not, oh, no, it, it's not capitalism. That's what I'm saying. It, 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 I mean, it is, but that's okay. It's, no, it's... it's it, no, capitalism. It doesn't matter. We're market. arguing about semantics right now. I mean, it, 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 it doesn't matter. Like, I, we're, we're absolutely saying the same thing. Capitalism is free market trade. And military contracts for weapons is not free market trade. Right, Correct. but you, you mentioned hospitals, so so it, I'm it's... not. Um, I that's why that's why I went back to military okay, contracts because okay, okay, I don't okay, know okay, about okay. military. I don't know about the hospital, but I'm sure it's probably the same fucking way. I'm, well, the I'm issue sure the the, hospitals the, the more likely the issue probably there. going on in the hospital is that you've got the insurance companies who are pushing for a specific medication because they have a contract on the other side and they're skipping the hospital. I'm just saying that, like, if medicine is as fucked up as an industry as it is, where they charge fucking, you know, crazy amount of money for a pill, and then the generic comes out, and it's like, well, you know, when it comes to insurance, it's like, oh, your pills are $18 for this bill. This pill, oh, you don't have fucking insurance? Okay, you're going to have to pay $170. Why is there such a big difference? Because you don't have an insurance company... Saying fuck you, we're not going to pay fucking hundred and seventy dollars. Right, you know, and you don't have the collateral of the however many. You know, when these fucking drug companies are like hiring trained to do their business seminar kind of shit, like it's fucking it's a crazy industry, and, and so that makes me think if the pill industry and the the well the drug industry is that corrupt, the fucking medical supply industry is just as corrupt. Probably. Larger point is uh, we don't we don't have the capacity to have a uh, again using the flu analogy which I'm not particularly comfortable with but whatever why not I, I don't know why we're using two it totally different viruses yeah I just I don't know. What, why not call it something else it, 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 it doesn't matter we're go, we're arguing about semantics I don't like that's uh, it's fucking asinine for us to argue about fucking semantics uh, the, the larger point is that if we have a flu 1.5 there's not that we don't have the resources to sustain it. And and we also don't have the resources if if we don't inform the society about it, we really don't have the resources to sustain it because people will die. We'll have to really truly choose who's going to live, like beyond what we are already potentially maybe have to do, if you know we are educating the public as it is. So there's just there's not a good answer, I guess. Is the is really the the answer? Who are the people that are dying from coronavirus? Old. Well, no, young are too. Compromised. Actually, young are yeah, young are are dying as from the As a majority, yes, it is older, but yes, there have been majority is old people. Right? But it's well, got a, it's oh, got a they're secondary over 50, issue. I'm, I'm not, sure that would which be point? the same for the flu as well. That that's also old true. people die yeah. from, from many of things just because they're. Well, older. the percentage is higher maybe, on maybe maybe this kids is the way we'll the get uh, social security when we get older. Yeah, we need to get rid of some old people. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, going back to you know, I was kind of like throwing you a bone last night when we were texting about the whole Italy thing. And you didn't, you didn't, you didn't get it, but that's okay. I didn't know what you were. You, honestly, it's it's a different demographic. It know? is because like the Italy, up until now, has the highest mortality rate in the world. Mm-hmm. They also they have, have a lot of smokers. More old people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you they read that have, article? Yeah. They have more old people, and so as a culture, like, they're more closely. As, mm-hmm. And so, like, they're, they're, I, there's sure. there's a great article on like why china doesn't have as many people dying as compared to italy and like the mortality rate average person is like 47 in um china where italy is 67 so you have a lot more older people in italy and so that's why the coronavirus is hitting italy so hard is just you know it's what was like, the bone I don't, I don't get the bone part of it well i i was saying Last night when we were talking, and I mm-hmm. said, "You're saying that United States didn't act, didn't take it seriously, and Italy took it serious, and they have a lot more deaths." And the, and the easy response was, "They have a lot more old people than the United States." I don't know if they do have a lot more old people. They do. I, I mean, show me some. I mean, how do you know that? There, there was. There's an article. If you get, if you just Google why are so many people di- dying and. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> and, and you'll find Ask a Google New York to give you an answer. You to will your own find question. a know, New York like, Times uh, article. You know your favorite news Sleep station. It's, it's not my, you the I, I listen to Fox News also. <laughs> I like the, the, it's, which goes back to our initial like what the fuck we were talking about point is that 
those of us that are hunkered down that only read or watch media from one particular source have no business in ha- having any sort of dialogue with individuals at all. So I like, get all my sources from YouTube. That doesn't narrow. We down. should have education <laughs> on YouTube. We should. No, should, we should not. We're we gonna. Should, we're gonna next we week. We should cancel the military. Don't let your children join the military, and all schools should be through YouTube. And Sam would be a I like happy how somehow this long term argument between the two of them became me. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier that way. Yeah, I am the pariah in the room. You've been silent for the last ten minutes, and we've actually made some progress in some of our dialogue. So I'm, oh, I'm not sure that that's a coincidence. So what's the flu coronavirus situation going on? I think we've agreed that it's a potential. It's potentially a problem, and uh, he's still con- it's he's, overreacting. He's concerned that it's overreacting. I'm saying that we're absolutely not overreacting at all. I, so I mean, we didn't make progress. Is that what? And what 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 um, credibility do you have in the infectious disease community? Uh, more so than you. Saw. <laughs> I thought I was about to say that. Poor you know, I, I grow I grow <laughs> hemp, but it doesn't make me a marijuana expert. I work in healthcare. It, ma- it absolutely makes me an infectious disease expert, one hundred percent. No, you don't. That's fine. Hey, the, yeah. the difference, though, is is I know that that's true, and you think that it's true. Well, those people at UT still don't know what happened to my sister. <laughs> that's. I mean, there's special that's cases, but that's that's I mean, that's I've, I've seen some crazy scenarios with it being a similar virus to the SARS virus, and how. It's the same you know, base it, virus, it right? Was, it was big in the spring. I don't know if it's a coronavirus Started dying off also. in the summertime, but came back in the fall with a much worse vengeance. Right, that and is the worst case scenario, yeah. That's the, that's the one thing they're afraid of. Is right that it'll, as well. it'll, 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 it'll slow down here over the summer <laughs> and mutate a little bit, and uh, come late fall, early winter, it's going to just punch us in the face. Now, but, there, there, there's a game you guys can play. It's called Virus or whatever, where you have to create a virus to take over the world. And all that kind of stuff. There, I think I've seen is that a real yet. thing? No, I'm dead serious. Okay, because I, I, so the, the part of what I was going to say was there are times where we're having an actual legitimate conversation, and you throw in something that I think is serious, <laughs> and I don't know if you're actually <laughs> serious or not. And this is another one of those no. times where I'm like, this motherfucker. Like we were in an intense dialogue about what the fuck and, we're doing, and then he says, you know, there's something out there. It's <laughs> called a virus game, and you just make shit up, and uh, you try to kill no, people with it. It is. It's, it's it real. Is. It's a real. <laughs> it's a real game where you have to create a virus, and you have to. Put it out in a place and it grows, and then the scientists around the world try to basically you try to get the whole world infected and die before the scientists figure out a a, a virus. Okay, so I played a board game version of that. All right, it's, so is this the tinfoil hat version of the story? No, so this, this, this I'll go down that funny road. Is one like you will lose if you do not get Greenland and Madagascar infected because Madagascar is notorious for shutting down their borders like you start infecting the world and if you don't get them in, into madagascar before everyone starts shutting down their borders you'll lose because madagascar won't take it yeah because and so um if you look at the world map greenland is not affected so um everyone's shutting down their borders now so we will survive this epidemic because of Greenland's so what you're saying is the media is running a version of your game it, they are and it's mass right hysteria now. and it's funny because they're like oh your virus has killed more than SARS your virus has killed more than this <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it keeps on giving you alerts and stuff but um, we're all safe because Greenland has shut down their borders and they're not affected right now what's the population in Greenland or, I mean it's I mean you got to ask Chiefs I don't know they did get Madagascar though I would New Zealand's fucking notorious for shutting no down their borders no more than those three or four hundred thousand is that is that a real thing? No, in the game. I'm saying oh, in the like, game. They see, shut again, the this is one of those times where I'm like, God damn, he's like he's saying something that's coherent and intelligent and then throws something in there. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Well, come by EVA Plans on our iPad. Where, tell me we about EVA Plans. It's a wonderful place. We yeah. can serve alcohol right now. Can or can on, not? On premise, not. But you okay. can take it to go. You can take alcohol to go? You can take alcohol that's to go. That's interesting. How does it? Do you guys have, uh, do you, do you have straws there too? We have straws. No, we don't have no. straws. Straws kill sea turtle. Uh, 2017, uh, Greenland's population was 56,171. Exactly. So smaller than the city of Knoxville. They're safe. <laughs> How many? 10% wow. of What's Knoxville. the land? So what, what? So what's the per capita there then? Land mass per capita. Jesus Christ. That's a, that's a complicated search. It can't be that complicated. What was total again? 56,000. 56,1. It's going to be more than that, actually. So we can find on our phone the population of Greenland, but we can't find out how many people have been tested for coronavirus. <laughs> CDC won't release it. 
No, it's not possible, according to Chase. It's, it's, it's not possible to be accurate. That's inconceivable! Right. I mean, I'd go with that, yeah. Probably, probably accurate. <laughs> No, because, I'm coughing. Because I think like I have coronavirus. Said, I, mean, I point, was in testing every day. One day, you're point get zero two days six later. nine per mile per people square mile per mile per square mile. Point zero point zero six nine but people per Greenland square mile. What is Greenland a principality of? of? Point so zero Green, seven. So Greenland's only five thousand square miles. Is that, the math? is that the math? It's a Scandinavian country, no? Yeah. For anybody that's actually still listening, we want to apologize <laughs> the fact that you've wasted the last hour and a half of your life. Uh, it's an hour forty-five. At Denmark. This Whatever, I'm guessing. Denmark. Denmark. What about this that? show has been brought to you by so Joe technically Rogan. Technically, the largest so country in Europe. Is Evic? Right? I Denmark. figure if we mention Joe Rogan, like, I didn't reference Rogan once. No, I'm saying if we mention him, maybe we'll get higher no. rating. No. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll hashtag we'll him on. We'll have more than post. five viewers. Well, we can't get we can't get more ratings if we're not watching. If it, if nobody's watching, I think that's the problem. <laughs> Listening, rather. Sorry. We need. God, can you mention this being video? Fuck. I've been stuck on Should have a GoPro five just followers on, like, on TikTok for continual time. Right, three months now. <laughs> do, you have, do you actually have a TikTok? Yeah, yeah. he TikToked the, the, <laughs> the episode you missed. That's right, yeah. Oh, fuck. I did TikTok it. That's funny. Crazy thing about TikTok, I've got all sorts of crazy videos on TikTok. But my number one video is a fucking alligator I filmed in a pond and did nothing. It just floated there. And I had a thousand views. But my fucking 120-pound shark I pulled out last week only has 100. It was like two days ago. Give it some time. Yeah, well, the shark was within four hours. I mean, the alligator was within four hours. No. Apparently, the alligators are hot right now. Maybe the alligators are hot. Is this why we hate the youth so much as we get older? Because they don't, they don't, uh, they don't do anything productive with their lives. <laughs> no. They just get on social media and they <laughs> they want likes. And yeah, and alligators. And I work with a guy that's in his mid to late twenties, and he keeps watching these videos. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but he watches it at like one and a half speed. And I don't know how the fuck he does it. But well, all I mean, it sounds like damn chipmunks, and I'm like, how are you catching everything? You well, can I mean, fast forward YouTube. Yeah, well, you can do it on on um, Apple Podcasts. You can do it at two times speed. Well, I'm sure you can. What's the, so? Why would you do that? To get everything really. Quick. To get the content quicker. Yeah. Like everybody that listens to our show. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's listening, so it doesn't matter. How can I get this <laughs> over with faster? on five times speed. I mean, you, you can oh. see if you put like one of our parents in like a PlayStation or Xbox controller versus you give a 13-year-old. They've got not necessarily the dexterity, but actually being able to watch the TV and be able to react, react simultaneously. The reaction time has increased, I believe, in the studies that I've heard over time. And they have carpal tunnel syndrome. And they have carpal tunnel. Is that a syndrome? Is it carpal tunnel syndrome? I'm not an orthopedic guy, man. I'm cardiovascular. Oh, but you, but you know about but he's uh, a virologist. infectious disease. <laughs> they call it a we do, yeah. We, we get a lot of infectious disease there. You we get do. this forearm. We actually we get like most a little of pillow on it. I don't know what exactly that pillow does, but I guess it helps your tendon rest. Oh, that. I know what you're talking about. That little pillow, yeah. yeah it's, it's called like a little, snuggie. Little, little pillow with a strap on it, yeah. <laughs> don't you? I do. I was fucking you with one earlier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think that's probably probably a good note to go ahead and shut this show down. We went to strap-ons and um, snuggies. For uh, anybody that is, uh, again, for anybody that's listening, do we have a comment section on our podcast thing? Uh, we have a Facebook page. It's um, We actually have a Facebook page. Yeah. How many followers do you have? Uh, zero. That's about, that's, that's about right. <laughs> no. Uh, so what I was going to say was we should have a comments page that we, if there's somebody out there that wants to uh, propose a topic for us to talk about, we should uh, should have that out there. But we just, won't talk about it. We'll wander yeah. on to something. No, else. you <laughs> won't talk about it. We'll talk about you know <laughs> anti-military and then make your stance and work backwards. <laughs> All right. Well, it's um, way late. It's the 21st of March. We're not dead yet. It's not April. It's not 25th of March. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I was like, what? Is he drunk? I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? You know what I thought when I said that? I was like, <laughs> fuck, I missed my brother's birthday. His birthday's the 25th of March. <laughs> and I was like, I was shit, like, did I talk to him on his birthday? <laughs> this happens when you're unemployed. I have no idea what day it is. Like the other day, I was like, what fucking day is it? That's funny. All right, well, good night, everybody. We will, um, we're coming back next weekend. 
I think so. All right, we got another one in a, in in a, in a week, and we'll get this uh, cleaned up. And uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna up. get it cleaned yeah. up. At all, we're just gonna uh, put it out raw as shit. You got two hours of, of us. You're welcome. And we'll see you next week. Okay, so we did it. That was then. This is now. It's been a a long year, as stated. Got much better with the sound quality. Got much better with the uh, content skills. So, you know, we appreciate y'all listening. We'll be back with new episodes very, very soon. Um, we're almost in agreement, almost in agreement at gmail.com, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Our website is live, almost in agreement.com. Feel free to check us out there. Reach out, let us know what you want to see. Um, hit us up on Facebook, hit us up on Twitter. We like to chat. We need topics to talk about, things that we're probably missing. Um, current events are current events, so that's your blast from the past from Almost in Agreement.